Before we begin this week's episode of the Outsider Art Podcast, I'd like to thank you all for listening. Please feel free to give the show a review on whatever platform you listen on. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the Outsider Art Podcast. Episode 3, Adolf Wolfley, Part 2. In 1916, as part of the second of his narrative works, the Geographic and Algebraic Books, Wolfley assigned himself a new name, which required some explanation. Quote, Saint Adolf I, Great King of Grenoble, Saint Adolf King, Giant City in Savoyen, last named with an additional calculation supplement of 50 hours as my third youngest brother, as a great god. And I am St. Adolf II, Couscous King, and King Great God. Burn, Friday the 23rd June, 1916. End quote. After 16 years of concentrated work, he must have felt he had earned this enriched sobriquet. The geographic and algebraic books saw Wolfley describe the emergence of the St. Adolf giant creation, a global and then cosmos encompassing journey. Dolphy has gathered together a great fortune, given his charity donations in sympathy for his calamitous experiences. He is now able to buy up the place he visited in From the Cradle to the Grave books and engages on building foundations activities rebuilding cities and countries, creating institutions for the public good and improving infrastructure. Not unlike a Roman emperor touring the provinces of his empire and funding bathhouses and roading networks. In Book 11, the Swiss Hunters and Nature Explorers Travelling Society transforms into a giant travel avant-garde and leave the earth to expand their travels into the cosmos. They encounter the Godfather and enter a more visionary dimension. In terms of the narrative, things become more complex and monumental, as described by Elke Spori in The Art of Adolf Wolfley, St. Adolf, Giant Creation. Quote, The language Wolfley used to depict cosmic events and to describe cosmic scenery is often ponderous and ornate replete with chains of adjectives and nouns. Since the conventional numerical system does not go far enough to describe the vast dimensions of the St. Adolf giant creation, he takes the traditional numbers through quadrillion and then expands them by 23 new numerical units. At first, the highest number in this invented system is Oberon. Later, he supplements this with an even larger number, ultimately the largest, which is called Zorn, which translates in English as rage. End quote. To represent the forms that accompany the St. Adolf giant creation and the cosmic events in the geographic and algebraic books, Wolfley created two new picture types, number pictures and music pictures. These representational forms differ from the figurative illustrations in From the Cradle to the Grave. While there are figurative elements in these number and music illustrations, they are primarily made up of either numerical calculations of capital, interest, and interest on the interest accruing on Dofi's vast imaginary fortune. Some of the number pictures also include words using the names of his invented numerical system. His music pictures feature musical notation, which have both a conventional layout and ones in which the staves form into spirals and mandalas. In some images, Wolfley combines the musical notation with collage, using images gathered from periodicals. The illustrations are complex with visual information, and at times the density of the musical notes produces almost a greying effect on the paper. For the figurative elements, he often used vibrant colour, which offset the black pencil which he primarily used to create the musical notation and the number calculations. 
These coloured elements serve to break up the visual intensity of the black pencil and create sections of the work to which the eye is drawn. In the book, The Art of Adolf Wolfley, St. Adolf Giant Creation, Edward M. Gomez writes of Wolfley in his chapter titled Adolf Wolfley, Visionary Graphic Designer, quote, Throughout his voluminous oeuvre, a number of skillfully developed components of Wolfley's finely crafted drawings call attention to his accomplishments as a graphic designer. And because conscientious planning is fundamental to the practice of design, which, by definition, entails creating order out of chaos or giving meaningful form to ideas, information or raw materials, the assumption that Wolfley made knowing decisions about how he shaped his drawings and book works informs any analysis of his achievements as what is known in design terms today as a, quote, visual communicator. He continues, Various features of Wolfley's work reflect his sensibility and skill in this regard. His choice and construction of the book as the primary mode for expressing and containing his artistic ideas, the overall structure of his grand oeuvre, with its sub-series of related volumes and other design decisions are evident throughout his work. Those aesthetic choices, or strategies, find expression in the strong compositional unity, rich patterning and vibrant colour that distinguishes page layouts and drawings. End quote. Gomez also makes an interesting comment with regards to Wolfley's bookmaking aesthetic. Quote, when looking at the drawings from Wolfley's illustrated books, some of which fill whole pages, it is hard not to recall medieval illuminated manuscripts. Several pages feature illustrated inserts portraying episodes of Wolfley's unfolding autobiographical travel or universe creation tales. They bring to mind the illustrational escutcheons that decorated such illuminated manuscripts as the 14th century Ormsby Psalter from England. End quote. Before we move on to the next collection of narrative works, the books with songs and dances, I thought it would be interesting to read a list of the titles that Wolfley gave to some of his illustrations. As they have generally been created to illustrate an event or place in the narrative works, they tend to be both informative and grandiose. The Divine Almighty and Wisdom at the Zenith Air Balloon of the Excellency, Air Pilot, Knight Edward Bernand of Waterloo. Rea Grigantica, Snake, Australia. Palace of the Inquisition on the St. Adolf Star Giant Glacier. Giant Canary, Wingspan, 10 metres. Great Godfather Wine Carafe. St. Adolf II, killed in his cradle by the Kerguelen Lightning, year 1865. Picture puzzle. Where is the little Bernese woman? In 1917, Wolfley worked on a six-set group of works entitled Books with Songs and Dances. These are large books, the biggest of which, Book 17, is nearly 20 inches thick. Book 15 was thicker, but as Wolfley wrote on its cover, the book of 36 kilos burst in two. These books are exactly what they say on the box. They are filled with music. Polkas, mazurkas, marches. The dancers are titled with women's names, invented names, or sometimes named after real people or events, such as the Dr. Morgenthaler Polka or the Plebsite Polka. The text is less of a narrative progression and there are significantly fewer illustrations in these books. Wolfley uses collage to a larger degree as well. The musical compositions are organised according to a numbering system, and are classified according to type of dance, voice, tempo, beat, measure and song number. They are written exclusively in solfege, which he adopted in the last of the geographic and algebraic books. During this time, Wolfley had another outlet for his illustrative works, however, as he began creating his single sheet drawings in 1916. Initially named by Morgenthaler as his bread art and referred to by Wolfley as portraits, 
These works can be separated from the illustrative work in his narrative oeuvre. However, in the accompanying explanations, which Wolfley wrote on the back of the drawings, they do have a connection in so much as the personages, countries and events mentioned there can be found in the narrative texts. Wolfley worked on these single sheet drawings until 1930, and we will return to them once we have looked at the final two narrative works. In 1922, in the final text of Book 20, which was part of his Books with Songs and Dances group, Wolfley plaintively bemoans what is preventing him from completing his narrative works. Quote, the end, esteemed reader and woman readers, because of my painful disease and hideous further sufferings, my undersigned humble person finds itself forced to directly conclude the great, instructive, entertaining and beautiful book that should not be underestimated in any way in regard to its unfinished content. That should not prevent the eventuality of adding to the above mentioned a number of meaningful, beautiful and memorable pictures, musical pictures, the musical execution of which I have sufficient energy and endurance to complete no longer. And yet, after I have worked for 22 years on this complicated oeuvre and have completed the third part of the whole book, I should like to add to the aforementioned still another pretty final act, which certainly will give joy and pleasure to some musical genius. Here follows a beautiful 11 partite final march blast consisting of 11 songs, end quote. However, despite this announcement, Wolfley did not stop writing and composing. He did, though, change his formatting, using a horizontal layout in thinner and easier to handle books than previously. He also gave away his continuous numbering system, and only a few of the eight books in his album Books with Songs and Dances collection have a title. He worked on these between 1924 and 1928. Again, there is a reduction in narrative texts. Instead, Wolfley uses key terms that substitute for the expanding storytelling from earlier. He has devised an efficient and economical means of continuing his work. The key terms are referred to by name or nickname in the progression of the song, such as, quote, Last 7, Ring 707, Ludmilla 7, Female Teacher 745, Land Grant 711, Daily Work 6, Beggar Bed 339, Miss Wagner 233, Madrid 111. End quote. The ring numbers provide the actual sequence of the songs. In terms of illustrations, four of the books contain works that were originally made for sale. These are bound in the middle part of the book with the layout and format resembling standard picture albums. Similarly to his single sheet drawings, these illustrations have explanations which refer to preceding pictures rather than songs or texts from the albums. It is also assumed from studying the binding of these books that drawings were removed at some stage. Wolfley also included 201 pasted reproductions, which he called picture puzzles, as Alka Spori writes in Adolf Wolfley, draftsman, writer, poet, composer, quote, In witty, mock-heroic verses of horror tales, he celebrates current events, personages and places in Switzerland and abroad. The Federal Council, the Swiss Army and technical innovations are some of his themes, end quote. She then goes on to quote Wolfley, quote, Picture puzzle number 40, Dissolved. The Coffee House National in Bern, that had a beautiful hall. Coffee now, that I like, and I am not yet bald. I think often not of a distant place, but of the beautiful Emmental. Up in the sky is glimmering a star. I am the principal. Is sixteen beats March, St Adolf Second, Bern. End quote. In late 1928, medical records noted that Wolfley had begun work on what was to become the final part of his oeuvre, Funeral March. Though there are no books dated 1928, and the first 2,395 pages of the work are missing. Funeral March contains 16 unnumbered books, 
and was worked on almost continuously until his death in November 1930. During this time, Wolfley suffered from almost constant illness and was hospitalised and operated on. His medical notes describe him as being weak, tired and in terrible pain for much of his last years. Still, he continued to insist that he must finish his funeral march with a view that, quote, everyone who knows anything about music will be able to play the march. It will be printed and will bring in hundreds of thousands of francs, end quote. Wolfley never did manage to complete the work. On the unfinished book of 136 pages, he wrote on only 36, but on other pages he left clues as to his process. He left empty spaces on these pages annotated with titles of what he aimed to fill them with. Cut out pictures lie next to the respective pages. As described by Elke Spuri, quote, Clearly, the look of the pages was neither the accidental result of the writing process, nor in any way automatic writing, but was designed by Wolfley well in advance. The space for one or several illustrations was determined before he began to write. End quote. Wolfley described the structure of the funeral march as follows. Quote, for many years now I am working on a very beautiful and strong funeral march, which will get all together 8,850 beautiful march songs. 7,150 songs are made already. In between, there are parts with numerous beautiful poems, puzzles, funny stories and jokes, travel stories, hunter stories and war stories, as well as a respectable number of beautiful pictures. The value of the whole work, once it is finished, will fetch 55,000 francs. End quote. Illustrations in the funeral march books were almost all created with collage. The images placed carefully on the page, surrounded by his specialised compositional scheme text in his flowing hand. Knowing of his considered techniques for design, we find some interesting juxtapositions. On one page, in the bottom left-hand corner, there is an advert for Campbell's tomato soup. On the page above, the books had a horizontal layout, There is an illustrated image of a well-dressed young woman on a boat, staring wistfully into the distance. Wolfley tended to use images cut from illustrated magazines, such as the Illustrated London News. Elke Spordi comments on his choice of imagery, In spite of his isolated life in the asylum, he shows great acuity in picking out the most relevant topics and events in arenas such as sports, film, politics, city life, and even advertising. All the pictorial motifs of his previous work are paraded once again in concentrated form. Female beauty, mother love, domestic bliss, comfortable living, in contrast to his life of poverty, political and financial power, mountains and glaciers, catastrophes and idols, and so on. End quote. As mentioned previously, Wolfley began working on his single-sheet drawings, which he called portraits, in 1916, and had completed hundreds of these by the time of his death. It were these drawings that featured in Walter Morgenthaler's monograph, and which Jean Dubuffet saw and acquired when he tripped through Switzerland in 1945. Wolfley became famous on the basis of these single-sheet drawings. They are of different sizes and were drawn on quality paper with coloured pencil. The largest of these, called Memorandum, measures nearly 6 feet 8 inches by 10 feet and was commissioned by Waldau. He was increasingly commissioned to create these works and while these commissions allowed him to make some money for things such as drawing materials and tobacco, it seems like he felt a degree of antipathy towards having to do these drawings as he felt like it took away from his most important task, which was the completion of his narrative works. Wolfley had an acute awareness that his artwork had value and would charge accordingly. However, sometimes the market wouldn't meet his expectations and Wolfley might drastically reduce his asking price. At times he would give his works away, generally to someone he liked, especially women and children. In 1922, he even proposed a one-man show of his work to a local innkeeper in Schupfen, 
The show didn't eventuate, but his careful planning and management of the expenses and accompanying catalogue was evident. In my opinion, Wolfley's single sheet drawings are amongst the most bold and accessible of his artworks. Elkis Boyri writes of them, quote, The single sheet drawings are usually simpler and schematic in their design than are the illustrations in the early works in the narrative oeuvre. The figurative elements are limited to renderings of one or two persons. Because of the frequent inclusion of wings, these figures often resemble medieval representations of angels. The faces with ornate crowns recall tribal chieftains or extraterrestrial creatures. Sometimes they wear crosses on top of their heads, suggesting religious icons. The figures show very slight gender differentiation. One recognises the males only by their moustaches. The female figures usually extend their right arm across the left, holding an object at waist level. Sometimes the object is utilitarian, a bass violin, a fan, an umbrella, but most frequently it is a bird. The faces in the single sheet drawings wear a kind of eye mask identical to those that appear on the faces in the text illustrations. The mask is the most idiosyncratic form in Wolfley's work. One can perhaps connect the motif of the eye mask to those experiences and impressions that Wolfley movingly describes in A Short Life Story, and she quotes Wolfley. Look at the frequently sunken, deep-set eyes of the lower classes, where you can see all too clearly the sorrow and misery that weigh on their hearts. Not everyone who sees his grieved, martyred face in the washroom mirror in the morning is a drinker. On the contrary, the grounds for his misery are to be sought elsewhere. End quote. Next time on the Outsider Art Podcast, we will investigate Wolfley's enduring legacy and influence. So please join me for Adolf Wolfley Part 3. Thank you for listening. <laughs>